RT correspondent John Honey. And for more on this, we're joined by Daniel Shaw, professor of Latin American and Caribbean studies at the City University of New York. Welcome to the show. Now, indigenous peoples, Afro-Colombians and farm workers, they've faced violence in their struggle for land and human rights. Now, students and other workers, they're getting involved. So the national strike encompasses a greater swath of the population. What gains do you think that they're going to make today? Millions of Colombians are in the streets of Bogota, Medellin, Cali, across the country. This is a massive upsurge against Ivan Duque in the neoliberal agenda. Uribismo, as it's called, the continuation of Alvaro Uribe's policies. And we're seeing the unity of Colombian people and how hypocritical for Duque and Uribe to constantly warn that these demonstrations better be peaceful and there better be pacifism when the Colombian state has been so brutal, so violent for so many decades, of course, with U.S. aid against the indigenous community, against the Afro-Colombian community, and against any dissent. Now, how do you see the Colombian government that has received the most U.S. funding of all Latin American countries and actually has been blamed for hundreds of extrajudicial killings of indigenous and Afro-Colombian social leaders just in 2018 alone, how do you see the government responding to today's strike, Daniel? Well, Duque was asked uh, several days ago about the, um, the killing of, of children in a rebel area and he basically said, what can I tell you, dude? What are you talking about? Uh, that's a direct translation. So the government has been uh, extremely um, fascistic uh, against any resistance. We have to remember La Unión Patriotica. Uh, whenever the Colombian resistance left the mountains and tried to actually participate in the quote unquote Colombian democracy, they were slaughtered in the thousands. So that's why we see again a resurgence of this uh, armed resistance across the country. And of course, we should mention the, the massacre of uh, the NASA indigenous people, uh, human rights defenders and land defenders. So the aggression of the Columbia, Colombian state is worse than ever. Now, with the Colombian military, Daniel, and its government essentially in the hands of the U.S. government, do you actually see today's national strike being successful and making real gains with pension and education? You know, what other methods can the people use to win control of their fate, essentially? Yeah, the Colombian masses, this country of 40 million campesinos and, and workers and indigenous who are today uh, marching and flying the Y Fala flag in solidarity with the people of Bolivia, Ecuador, Chile, Haiti, everywhere that there are uh, uprisings, they're not just up against the Colombian state of Ivan Duque, they're up against the U.S. sponsored Colombian state, the $265 million in U.S. military aid that was sent this year under Trump, even more in, in past years with El Plan Colombia. So we shouldn't forget that there's nine U.S. military bases, over a thousand U.S. military soldiers stationed in Colombia, 12 U.S. military bases in Panama, where there's also protests scheduled for later today against the same neoliberal agenda. So the Colombian people are fighting back not just for their interests, but for the interests of humble people across the world. Now, Daniel, how do you see the U.S. maneuvering to keep Colombia in its hands as the whole region continues to be rattled by the successful coup, as like you mentioned, in Bolivia and ongoing interventions, including sanctions in Venezuela and other countries? Yeah, what we're seeing is a type of amanecer latinoamericano, Latin American daybreak, or as the Washington Post said, a season of protests that have rocked the region. Uh, the U.S. definitely has had Colombia as its client regime, if you will, the Israel or the Zionism of Latin America. So they're very afraid of unrest in Colombia. Uh, they're afraid now that Lula is out of prison in Brazil of losing uh, grip over Brazil. Argentina just had elections that were anti-Macri, anti-neoliberal. Uh, so the entire region is in tumult. And of course, this sends shockwaves uh, across the world in fear down the spine of the Pentagon and the U.S. ruling establishment. All right. Well, professor of Latin American and Caribbean studies at the City University of New York, Professor Daniel Shaw, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thank you.